next painting we're going to talk about is by the winner of the Archibald Prize, Tony Costa. It's called Lindy Lee and it's number 13. I interviewed Tony both on the day of the Archibald announcement and for an in-depth interview, which is episode 70 on the podcast. Now, if you know nothing about Tony's painting, what you'll be surprised to hear is that this work was almost entirely painted with his bare hands. No brushes, no palette knives, just surgical gloves covering his hands and his fingers do the rest. He also paints on a flat surface, not an easel, and his working table is actually a hospital bed with a large piece of masonite on top so he can raise and lower it if he needs to. You can see his studio and the table in my video, which is on the website, where he also shows his painting technique. It's absolutely fascinating. It also took him two days to paint this painting, um, and he painted for 14 hours straight on the first day with a 10-minute break for lunch, as he didn't want to lose the flow or to overwork the painting. He also deliberately wanted to make it look as though Lindy was floating. So when she was meditating, he pulled the robe over the front of the platform she was sitting on so he could achieve that sense of weightlessness rather than a, a, a weight on a visible surface. Um, and he wanted to convey that because Lindy had said to him that after she had meditated, she felt like she, she was floating. Most importantly, though, is Tony's aim to trap energy in his paintings, and he seeks to do that whether he paints a portrait or a landscape. He, in fact, won the Paddington Art Prize for Landscape Painting in 2014, and landscape painting is a very big part of his practice. Even a rock has an energy, he told me, and if you can trap that in the painting, he says, then that's going to be there in a thousand years' time. Another important part of his work is the use of line um, and have a listen to this clip where we talk about that. And also I'm not mm. interested in volume. I'm only interested in, in um, suggesting somebody's hair or suggesting somebody's face. Mm. So I use the line to, to get away from solids, which is something that Ian Fairweather said. And I love that idea that you can still describe a shape, but you don't have to render a shape. You yeah. don't have to create that 3D quality because it's not what you want. You, you're after something else. Mm. So the line um, is used as a, as a summary or as, or as a suggestion. Yeah, and so it's a much flatter effect in yeah. that way. Yeah. Or oh, extremely flat. Yeah. But I'm, I'm only interested in compressed space, shallow space, because by doing that, it forces me to concentrate on the rhythm. Mm. If I start thinking about perspective and volume and getting it right, then I, I lose my concentration. So I can bring my concentration back to the rhythm. And also, if I'm working with line, I work from the gut rather than my head. And if I'm working on a flat surface, I have to somehow find a way of bypassing my brain because that's where the ego lives. <laughs> yeah, right. And also, you know, to suspend judgment. 